I think we just called in um, every Aboriginal from Uluru. <laughs> Uluru. <laughs> and oh, if, in funny. case you don't know what that is, there's a giant, holy, like, rock plateau-looking thing out in Australia. I know there's a, a machine learning project that's trying to take all the languages from Australia and put it. How many Aboriginal languages are there? Aboriginal languages? Yeah. I mean, there's a ton because, like, I know that they can't, like, some tribes can't even, don't even understand the language from another tribe because it's so unique. 363 yeah, languages. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was way 363 languages belonging to 28 families. That's a centralized me? language. <laughs> if you think about that ratio, you go into your own household, you wouldn't even know what anyone's saying. <laughs> your siblings would be speaking a totally different language. <laughs> but uh, you know, but that's your choice, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to speak this language, that's my that's my sovereignty over. The Aborigines have a decentralized structure of their own little microculture. Mhm. Mm it's really amazing. They do interact, but they may not understand, but they still live in harmony. Well, uh, the beautiful part about them is the continuity that spans throughout all of them mm -hmm. is their oneness with nature. Yeah, they understand the aspect of what it means to be a human being and be on this planet. So they may not be able to communicate in a language, but I guarantee you if they went out hunting or they were going on the land getting bees or whatever it may be, honey, they would all be able to do that. Well, then let's talk about, you know, going back to Robert Breedlove. This is like our part three here. Yes. And he was, he was talking about, you know, energy and sovereignty and, you know, digital creative destruction. He put on this chart here, and he was speaking about Bitcoin, but I think this, this expands beyond this because this is about decentralized aspects. He's talking about the fifth layer. And it starts with like the link, the bottom layer. This could be for data, this could be just for, as well. This could be for data, but I'm just using the context of the aboriginals. What's, what's their link? Nature. Mm -hmm. Nature or being a human being. You know, and um, they will walk paths along uh, electromagnetic lines or outputs in Australia, and they'll wear those paths on their bare feet. They have a, like almost like a scout, you would call it, mm -hmm. that's leading the tribe where they need to walk. Um, and they use that. That's their network, but we use the internet, right? I'm just, I'm doing these bridges here, right? And then their transport. So we're think we're thinking about, uh, communication like online, whether it's like a chat message or whatever it might be. But for them, it's like my transporter on my feet. I got to walk where I need to go and I'll speak whatever my language is. Right. And then for application, which is our next layer, like our fourth one, it's, a, you know, in the chart here, it says deliver software files and applications. It's one tribe meeting up to the next. Mm. Let's bring our resources, our, our knowledge, our understanding. Let's share it with you. Let's bring our data. Let's share it with you. And then the very last part of it is the value transfer. Mm. What was gained from this? We became knowledgeable. We've understood each other better. We've understood our link to nature better. What was gained from this? I like that. That's like, what, that's what, what, what it was is. gained from this. That's that. That's that. And we talked about this earlier with Tartle offline. That's that ability to create value. Correct. And have an exchange of value. So we have all these shifting decentralized nodes interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. There's no central authority, but they're all sharing value rather than the, having the central authority determine, oh, this is what's valuable and then sending it out to the nodes. Mm. The nodes can freely talk to one another. They don't need a central authority. Yeah, and I like how he brings it and, and with he goes back to first principle philosophies uh, and he talks about first principle of social economics and he says this, man must act. Action requires energy and implies purpose as all conscious decision making involves the attempted achievement of an aim mm. so we have energy with purpose we have conscious decision making and then we have an achievement of an aim yeah and you gotta you have think a seal. about and you talked about aim when it came to forging a sword and making a sword and oh then, i, I remember that this metaphor before if you if you think about a blacksmith mm-hmm you you know people use this the thing you got to strike when the iron's hot right okay so if the iron is hot you have to have a very focused precise hit coming down to form this metal whether this metal is an idea or data you need to come down and you have to articulate it with a thought or an action every single time you have to do it over mm. and over and over and over but you know the end goal the aim is to have this sword or mm. some sort of tool that will help you progress further. Because you have this solid piece of metal that is 
heated Mm -hmm. with no form, no purpose. No. And and this is what he says. He says, the aims of man are always towards the alleviation of anxiety. What Austrian economists call want satisfaction are reduced uneasiness. Right. So So there's anxiety here. Yeah. So if you're dealing with the world and you're dealing with unknowns, you try and create stability. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm worried about getting attacked by another tribe, I'm going to make a sword. I need to find a way to defend myself. If I'm worried that I'm not getting value for my data, I need to sign up on Tartle, right? right? These are these these are these actions that you take. So if you have a worry, where's the solve? And if there isn't a solve, create one. Lucky for you, there, we have a data solve that's done. But 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 through technology and through efficiency, you've created a tool. The blacksmith has created a tool that can be used for further progress. Yeah, for further progress. I mean, it, I be it, it's war, which is horrific, but that but, is progress for But mankind. when you decrease more risks, you can focus on what the end goal is without more externalities yes. that could actually hinder the evolution towards that goal. Yeah, and he said, mankind is the dominant species on Earth because he uses technologies and organizational systems to challenge channel energy across space-time with more intelligence and towards more, more profound purposes than any other animal. Well, yeah, it's because the animals don't use the internet. Yeah, and he said, our higher aims require Unless the channeling. Unless you're on QAnon. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go there. Great documentary on HBO Cinemax <clears throat> going through that. Our higher aims require the channeling of energy at larger spatial temporal scales with more sophistication and with greater precision. In case anyone doesn't know, temporal just means time. Yeah. So bigger space-time scales. So the amount of time it takes to get somewhere and across what expanse does that take? Tools amplify the force of our work efforts. Yeah. Increasing the ratio of outcomes to energy expended. So, so then we need to stop here so, for a second because this is right, important. Let's hold up. Let's go back to our, our blacksmith anvil mm-hmm. thing. <clears throat> I got a hot piece of iron. I can smash it with a rock, which is some oblong shave, and I hit it up there. We're going to use it in my hand, burn my hand up, right? It's not really efficient. But what happens when I create a hammer? Mm-hmm. Now I have a tool that has a much more effective purpose, more so than just some big oblong rock that had weight. You have a tool creating a tool. I have a tool creating a tool. And then what happens is you start to engineer more tools That's to create title. other tools. We won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> it's tooling it's and retooling. Yeah, it's, what you do is you create a fractal of efficiencies, yes. right? And then one thing can specialize to another, and that allows for the advancement of these tools. And then through that, it allows you to get to that whatever the end goal is quicker. You're engineering yourself towards a faster evolution towards that end goal. Whether you're using it with a decentralized currency, whether you're doing it with a decentralized marketplace that allows people to empower themselves on their data, whether you're doing it, you know, I don't know, with a blacksmith with the the sword. The better the tool, the quicker you get to that end goal. Maybe I want to produce a thousand swords. So I'm going to start with a hammer. Mm. And then I'm going to start with a pneumatic hammer. And then I'm going to start with 30 pneumatic hammers. And then I'm going to have a thing that just presses the metal out in one hit. Yeah, he says tools amplify the force of our work eth- efforts. Yeah. So whenever we look at Tartle as a tool um, for a, a, this free marketplace of exchange of data for sellers and buyers, when, whenever we, and we amplify the force of our work efforts, um, let's say we have all the planet, 7 billion people on Tartle, mm-hmm. and, there, and there's this exchange that's going on. Well, you got to amplify. We, how do we, you amplify? Yeah, we've amplified efforts. Uh, yeah, how do you amplify the efforts? I put all this work into filling out my social media data, right? Mm-hmm. On Facebook or whatever that, or whatever your system might be. Okay, you put all the effort in there, but it hasn't helped you towards your end goal of actually creating value, right? So I go on Tartle, this new tool that's going to amplify all the previous work I did so that I can capture value from it. Does mm, that make sense? Yes, that makes sense, yes. That's how that works. One, two, three, boom. It's a, tr- a three-step, triple step of Vishnu. Uh, I, he talks about uh, socioeconomic organizations. I love how he says this. In this. He says, like capitalism, socialism, and now sovereignism, Mm-hmm. So he's like, we've moved past socialism, we've moved past capitalism. Let's get into sovereignism in the sense of, you know, and we look at it as as data sovereignism, like ownership of data. Yeah, of course. And as an individual with the responsibility where that goes. Key word, boom, right there. Yeah. You can't have sovereignism if you don't take responsibility. Yes. That's it. You can't be sovereign on this planet if we don't take responsibility for the health of the planet. Well, that's what he said. He said, let us engage in concentrated action to immensify collective output through the concentrated concentration. Yeah, go ahead. He's going to say, through the (laughs) concentration of individual attention on ever narrower phases of production. This is what we talked about. Yeah. I got to narrow down my attention on something. If I want to make a really good sword as a blacksmith, I have to narrow down my focus. I have to strike precisely. But that's my responsibility to hit it where it needs to go. Mm. It's my responsibility to take my data and send it where I want to send it. 
It's my responsibility to take control of the actions I have that are affecting the earth and other human beings and fix that. That's for me to do, not for someone else to choose for me. We need to learn self-responsibility. The world does because we pissed it away. It's been gone for so long. Well, we, we, we've allowed, I think in our complacency and comfort, yeah. we've allowed, yeah. uh, we've allowed these organizations, whether they're governments or whether they're corporations to come in and say, let's, because they, and he talks about this, these organizations, whether they're governments or whether they're tools. So a, a, a corporation is a tool. A government is a tool. You're a tool. <laughs> yeah, I'm a tool. Yeah. There's a great band called Tool. Uh, I love them. Yeah. Band, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they were 90s, right? Wasn't yeah, good it? drumming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so whenever we look at, at these tools, they're tools that we as humanity get to wield, if mm -hmm. we're thinking of a sword, but we hold the sword and we wield it. What we have done is we've allowed them to create a tool within a tool, and then they've created the sword. And then they said, hey, stay in your home. Don't come to battle. We'll do that for you. Yeah, that's what When it it's is. our responsibility to go to the battle. Yeah, it's you. Listen, you've created that issue. Mm -hmm. Don't pass it off because the second you do that, you're giving control to everybody else. Tartle elevates data out of its archaic realms. Mm. It helps it takes the, it, 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 Tartle helps give data the next step in its evolution. It helps human beings give them the next step in their sovereignty about what they are creating and tracking that. It, allows, it gives us the natural progression of realizing the cause and effect of our actions and interactions. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into hydroelectric dams, but he uses this as a, 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 a good metaphor. I, I'm I. from Washington State, so Either I've, seen, am I. I've seen what they've done um, with salmon species and stuff like that. But he says the hydro, a hydroelectric dam and the nation state have this in common. They are both intelligently designed reservoirs and allocations of energy. The dam for a hydraulic energy of water and the nation state for the meto uh, metabolic, political, and productive energy of populations. Of course. Why do you think all the earliest civilizations built themselves on water? They understood what the energy was. Mm. They, they were, they were a, there's, a, there's a specific word for this. Herodotus wrote this in the Histoires. But um, it's a hydro, something where the, the largest groups focused on the power of water and mm -hmm. then tuned that energy into allowing the growth of those civilizations or cities. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, water is the most powerful thing that we could ever. But they have. realize that. I mean, you can't go without water for how many days? Three. I don't know. I think it's three. You can go without food for months. You know, they have some, they have some data on some people that don't drink any water and live for a long time. <laughs> There's got to be some form that they're they're getting some type of water. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's what they. Because our, our we're we're basically you've talked about this before. We're like little conscious fish bowls. Yeah. Because we're made out of how many? What seventy, eighty percent water? Yeah, we're about the same ratio as Earth. But he says, uh, it, this is, we're going to get real philosophical here, so be, be patient with us if, if you guys aren't into this, but this is so cool. He says, both at least temporarily harness and channel the entropic onslaught of ecological and human nature. But energy in, allows <laughs> us to deal with chaos, right? Yeah. So the more energy we have to create tools to help refine that chaos would be to our benefit. And he says, but in the end, in the end. Both give way to the decentralizing tendencies, the very nature they seek to contain. Yeah. Could you imagine, think about this. Imagine if the government was trying to stop the chaos that everybody, every individual creates. It's a very inefficient way mm -hmm. of doing things. Or, or a corporation. It's better for an individual to deal with their own chaos. Because then if everyone's taking responsibility for their own actions, then things would stabilize yes. you know, quite nicely. Mm-hmm. Rather than one person trying to do it and then create a model for everybody, why doesn't everyone just work with their own best model? <laughs> well, if they if we would go back to nature and look at this, and he says this, water always flows to the lowest places. And people always self-organize in ways that most favor their economic interests. We're naturally efficient in things that we want. We just That's why we're magnetically attracted to specific things. <laughs> There's no difference. So... As we look at this hydroelectric dam, as we look at these organizations, as we're looking at these tools, I want to, um, in this episode in this, when when we look at a decentralized system, and I, and I love what he said here, water always flows to the lowest places. You know, if there's a crack in that dam, it's going to find it. It's going to find the efficiency. Yeah, it's going to find the efficiency and move in that direction. When we look at Tartle's marketplace, yep. and, and we look at how efficient it is, in this, and it, it's so I can't even tell you how efficient it is. Yeah, but it is so funny because when you explain it to people, they're like, that's so simple. Why, why haven't, you know, and it's like, why well, hasn't somebody else thought of this? Well, we asked the same question and that's yeah. why we did it. And if no one was doing it, well, somebody's got to do it, right? 
So whenever you look at, um, we look at economic interests, we look at water flowing to the lowest places, the statement here, and we look at turtle in and of itself. Why is this data marketplace so essential to humanity? Why? Because it allows for that efficiency, that gravity to pull us all together, mm. magnetically pull buyer and seller together, party A, party B, and to collect our information, our energy in a place where we can easily share in that resource. But, but there has to be trust involved. Of course. There's a betterment of humanity involved. There's this ability for both parties to be respectful of each other. Well, yeah. Listen, if you are being disrespectful, right? say you're a buyer and you're being disrespectful, people can block you. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to buy any data. Well, they, they well, have. And, well, vice versa. Hold on. And vice versa. If you're lying on your data, you're literally lying about stuff and you're trying to like cheat people out of like their money, a buyer can block you. Mm -hmm. You're disincentivized to lie on the platform. Yes. For stuff that is self input. Outside of API calls that happen from other third parties, you're disincentivized to lie for things you're putting in yourself. You got to strike balance. Mm, you got to create, you have yes. to foster a, a culture and a, a group of like unified truth for everybody, for both parties. And that you fostering that respect between both. I understand you're willing to pay me. Well, then I'm willing to be extremely truthful. Well, philosophically, that's why a free market works. That's I because kept it, it allows. Yeah. Yeah. Because it allows uh, people, it, it shows, it, it shows that weakness, that crack, because it's going to flow in that direction of that weakness. So whenever, if you have a, if you have a, a seller or a buyer that's being dishonest, it, it, it's going to, you're going to see skewed data from that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, if, if Patagonia goes on and they want to purchase data, you know, from us, let's would say, love, I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. They're a great company. I would love that. Um, but they purchase data from us and then they have this outlier of this user, you know, that's, you know, being just stupid and saying, you know, I'm anti, you know, climate stability and all this stuff then why would they want to purchase data from that person? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the marketplace the marketplace corrects itself. Correct. Or people are filling out stuff they have no interest in. They're just filling out nonsense. Buy. They'll never yeah. buy from you again. It's your loss to lie. It's a free market. People will be like, we're not going to buy from you. And they have that option. But I mean, as he talks about when, when he talks about humanity, it, it is in their best interest in an economic standpoint. It's in their favor, to be honest. The Tartles Marketplace has created that. It's in your favor, to be honest, because <laughs> you're going to get paid for your data as an individual. Yes. In how you, and those those quirkinesses about you as a person are what companies want to purchase. They want to know the quirkiness. Yes. They want to know what makes you you. Patagonia wants to know, do you buy just our brand? Do you buy North Face and our brand? Do you buy these Do you buy all these other brands? Do you go to REI? You know, why? why? They want to know all of that. Tell me the why. That's what they're curious about. Yes. If you don't speak the truth, you hinder your evolution, you hinder the person you interact with evolution, and everybody else they interact with too. Lying slows our growth as a species. Wake up. There's no good in it because it made it feel, you know, you didn't want to like take the risk or you're uncomfortable about it. Every time you lie, you damage yourself and others. Mm. That's a problem. It's not beneficial to anybody. Yeah. And we, and uh, Robert Breedlove, we said, of course, we'd love to have him on the podcast, but I'd love to have these. You've read a lot of books on it. Um, these Austrian, and we've reached out to a few of them, but uh, these economists love to have them on. I would, I would like to know philosophically more about free market and their view on that, because I think it just aligns so well with Tartle. Yeah, I, it'd be, I'd have to sit here with a bucket of popcorn. I'd like enjoy it so much. And our subscribers on YouTube has gone through the roof here recently. People, and we thank you for subscribing. What is the easiest way to, if they, if they want, if somebody wants to be a data champion, what is the easiest way for them to do that? Uh, they go to Tartle.co. We also bought just about every typo for how you would spell it. <laughs> so no matter what you do, trying to type in Tartle.co, it's going to send you to yeah. it. You know, and then once you're on there, you click on the button that says get started and we will walk you through transparently every part of the process. We are setting the bar for respecting you as a human being and mm. respecting your data and your rights. Okay. So go to turtle.co and click on get started.